All right, everyone. Um, as I was reviewing my uh, previous clips, I realized that it might be hard to tell how to take off some of the panels when they're already all the way off. So after my install, as you can see, everything is put back together the way it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna try to explain it the way I took it out without taking it out physically. Um, it'd be easier to see how everything is put together um, normally. So where I started first was down here, this little drunk drawer. You just pop this, I think it's in. You just kind of wiggle it around and you'll be able to pull it out. So that's easy, pull that out first. Once that's out, you can actually remove this entire panel down here, including this. So grab right around here and just give it a hard tug down. There'll be a clip on this side and a clip over here on this side behind the panel. It just hangs down, sort of like a glove box once it's open, but it'll be hanging down all the way. Um, next panel to take off um, would be the A-pillar. So here's the A-pillar. You're just gonna reach behind right here with your panel, just get your fingers in there and um, pull this way. It means there's a clip right in here and then it just slides up and out. Um, in between the vent and the tweeter uh, trim piece. So after that is done, I would go ahead and take off the upper dash piece, which connects all the way to the other side. So this piece, I don't know if you can see this seam, but you're gonna take your pry tool and pry it. And there's probably six or seven clips that go around and you just pop it up and it should release and um, come free. Once it's free, there's clips in the back that face like this. And so you're gonna take the panel and pull it towards you and it'll pop it out of the back over there. And the same goes for the other side. Um, there will be clips or um, uh, yeah, just little clips along the seam in here. So get your pry tool underneath this and then it should pop up and then you can pull it out this way. So once that's out, this piece and this piece are actually separate so I don't know if you can see it but right there they seam together and underneath they just kind of clip in place so you can actually remove the whole right side passenger side dash panel piece um, separately from the driver's side piece um, next since the A pillar is out and the dash piece is up and moved out of the way you don't have to pull it out all the way because there are some wires that run through it for that guy up there. Um, so the vent in the tweeter bracket or trim piece is this entire piece right here. It goes all the way around the dash right here, separates right there, and then it goes across here including the um, seat presets. Um, you have to have this piece, this panel taken off first because on the panel up here there's a tab that goes behind this panel and so if you try to take it off it won't it'll resist this panel so pull this down take off the a pillar and then get on the inside of the door over here when the door is open and start popping away clips there will be clips if I remember correctly it's I showed you in the previous videos but there should be a clip somewhere around here uh, there's one I think right down here somewhere and then up here in the back once this dash piece is up there will be a bolt take out that bolt that is screwed in and you should be able to just pop it up and take out this entire um, trim piece right here once those pieces are out I showed you previously where the instrument cluster is located it has a bolt in every single corner along the thing you can take that out and it just allows for better access to running wires and such um, up here by the trim piece that goes around the head unit like I said before these two pieces are connected together and the place I would put the pry tool is right here put it in between this gap and pop it out because there's a clip right in here somewhere same goes for this side once you get the top partially out for the stock head unit it extends further underneath so there's a clip right here that actually clips into the stock head unit and the same over here 
so just get on the side and kind of pop out a little bit um, again make sure your uh, gear shifters in your drive second or first gear and then there's two clips down here these are the one this, I broke the one on this side and you're just gonna carefully pop it out this way once that's out uh, pretty straightforward there's four bolts holding in the head unit um, that's all I took off trim piece wise I didn't have to take off this one I did explain in the previous clips uh, how to get it off but I never actually did take it off um, what else so this guy right here you're gonna take the glove box and see this tab right here push in this tab on both sides there's one over there too push them in at the same time and it'll allow the glove box to swing all the way down once it's in down position I showed in the earlier clip you just push the glove box to that side and slide it and then it comes out entirely and if you look up in here I don't know if you can see it or not but there is actually a screw somewhere around here and then over there um, you can actually pull out this grab handle all the way I don't really know if you have to but I just did it anyways um, the tweeter over here you want to take out take off this a pillar so again grab behind here and pull out this way and it should slide out um, the tweeter and the vents trim piece is also held in in the corner up there by a bolt so once you have this dash piece off you can get to that bolt take it out and then start prying on the edges or the seams of the vent and pop it out don't mess with the airbag I didn't have to do anything with it didn't have to go around wire wires through it so that wasn't a big problem for me um, the doors so I mocked them up before in the earlier clips but you want to pop off the panel this panel right here that goes around the door handle and it just slides out from inside of this and there's a 10 mil millimeter bolt up here and then down at the very bottom of the door like I showed earlier there's that clip with the screw in it take that out and then take the door and lift up and then out but remember to disconnect the wires before you pull it off and once it's off you should be fine um, since I was doing an audio install you may have noticed that this um, the window controls actually had some play in them in the doors and they would rattle at certain frequencies from the door speakers so what I did was once the door panel was off you can actually push from underneath and there's four metal little tiny uh, clips that are on the edges right around here and you just push it up and it comes out super easily what I did was I put some masking tape around those metal clips and then I also sorry electrical tape around the metal clips and I also put electrical tape underneath the clips all the way around on the edges of the, um, the control uh, piece and then <clears throat> I took some 3M double sided tape and put it on the bezel the bezel is the width of this all the way around um, underneath this black outer trim piece um, this allowed it to adhere to the um, this silver trim piece and once I put it back in it was a really snug fit clipped back in place and now there's no play like if I move it, move it like this there's no play so it doesn't rattle anymore on the doors um, I explained it in my lost Jeeps uh, article which I will have linked down in the description um, it's extremely comprehensive and it showed and it explained how I dampened some of the door panels so I just put some foam I had laying around the house on the inside put it on the inside there um, any big flat pieces like down here and then there's these clips like the, that look like this on the back side of this panel and they clip into these little slots I guess you could say and um, hold the door from pulling out this way. So what I did was put some electrical tape around those clips to keep um, any uh, plastic on plastic connections free from that, which could cause rattles. Um, what else? So 
on these panels? Um, you have to take off these this upper panel before you take off the one down there. So you just pop off this little half moon shape. Underneath is a screw, and then start prying, and pulling out the clips, and then that should be free. Then you can move on to the panel down there. Um, same goes for the other side over here. And I think that is everything up in the dash area that I had to remove to make my install easier. So I'm gonna move to the trunk area now. Almost forgot. So this is the Metra um, dash kit, bracket, I guess you could say, that you need for the aftermarket stereos like this. So let me turn this off real quick. See it better. All right, so in uh, an article I read, someone had put in this dash kit and without any modifications, and they're right here, right in this seam, there's the large gap, probably eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch that you can see inside the dash. And the same goes for up right around here. And that was because this dash piece doesn't do too well in this, um, in this layout. I don't know how to explain that. But, so what I did, you can barely see it. You can actually see where I cut it. So what I did was I cut out, um, you could use a Dremel or I used a uh, hot X-Acto knife to cut out where I wanted. And this allowed this to sit deeper back and that brings out the head unit more. So it eliminates the gap between the stereo and the Metra dash kit. All right, so now I'll go to the back. All right, so I'm here in the trunk and um, for the trunk area, on this side, you want to pop out this panel. It comes out pretty freely. Then you can move. You have to remove these little cargo tie downs. They have a long bolt that goes in and secures it to the actual frame of the car. Same goes for over here on this side. Once that's removed, there's no screws that keep it in place. It's just all clips. So you start down here. This panel right here just completely, completely pops up like that and once this pops up you can see the two bolts that actually hold in the cargo bin those I'll get back to uh, a little bit later and um, down here what I suggest is grabbing this piece right here and pulling towards you this way and then the same goes for up here I don't know if you can see that but there's a panel that runs across the top up here pull off this panel once it's pulled off you can grab behind here and also pop it up. There's two clips on the inside here, and this helps to release it. There's some uh, support clips deeper inside here. So just start kind of pulling, and you should be able to uh, pull them out. Make sure the seats are down. This makes it easier since this panel does run all the way to the front, um, halfway down in the kick panels, and connects to the front pillars. Um, so this panel, you pop it out all the way. There's a clip by the foot well or the wheel well pull that out and then you should be able to pull out the entire panel from the car that's what i did um it's the easiest method you will have to remove this panel first again the half moon has a screw in it and then just pop off the clips and you can have it free hanging um exact same thing on this side remove the cargo tie downs and then pull this way down here pull up here once this panel is off up here and just get off that panel first and then you can pull out the entire panel when the seats are down. All right, so let me put some of these pieces back. Um, don't be afraid to give some of the panels some force. Just be careful where you apply it because I didn't have any problem breaking anything. All right, so we move to where the amp is. The amp is underneath this cargo bin. So we lift it up here. So this is what it looks like. Um, I made it really clean. We got the two component crossovers for the front right here. This is the Pioneer Champion Series amplifier, five channels. So I was able to run front, rear, and subwoofer all from this amplifier. So let me move this guy out of the way. All right, so that's out of the way. 
Um, I almost forgot. This guy, this panel, this thing that bends up and down, just gives this a tug straight up. There's like four or five clips that goes across. This comes out really easily. Once that's out, you got all the panels in the back out that you allow you to remove the actual entire cargo bin. The cargo bin, like I said before, is held in with those bolts underneath. I just covered them up, sorry about that. So take out those bolts, and you should be able to start lifting it up. When you lift it up, you're gonna pull out towards you because they're held in place by these little, uh, I don't know how to explain it, these little hooks that kind of just hook underneath. There's no clips or anything, it just slides out and you can pull it out of the trunk entirely. Um, all right, so this is where I ran my RCA cables. There's a uh, three quarter inch grommet that I drilled. And when you drill the grommet, you wanna drill straight in the middle of one of these guys. So you drill down and through. That allows the grommet to have a lip to go over, around. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there should be one of these little ribs right there. But I just drilled it out complete, completely. And the same goes for this side. I would suggest putting these grommets on this side because if you look at my Lost Jeep article, I had some pictures of the underside of this cargo bin and it shows that there's these ridges that are square underneath it and it gives support for the cargo bin and pushes against the carpet and the frame of the car underneath this. So it allows it, so it keeps it from bending under pressure. So if you drill the holes right here, you're on the outside of those ridges so you don't have to cut out any of the ridges and try to find a way to run the wires in. And the same goes for over here. The problem I ran into was the ground wire since the layout of this amp puts the ground and the power wire right here. So I used another three quarter inch um, grommet, drilled out one of these ribs, and then it allowed me to run the power and the ground wire. If I were to do this again, I would probably reposition some of these things so that I can put this grommet further out because since these wires were so thick, it made it hard to bend it up and then into the um, inputs right here. Um, I ended up getting it, it was fine, but the ground wire and the power wire run through I think two ribs and then around underneath over here to a ground that's inside there. Um, I would probably suggest running it this way for the ground because it's a shorter distance so it makes it easier. We almost ran out of distance on the ground wire and you want to keep it short for obvious reasons. Um, the RCAs, when you actually take out the entire bin, there's a carpeted mat on, on below the bin. This mat, what I did was I had the RCAs running up here by the wheel well and I just had them come straight across. Since there's no ridges on the back side up in this area, I didn't have to worry about them getting crushed when I put this panel back down. So I just run it across, I cut two parallel slits on the carpet and then ran a zip tie underneath and tied it uh, down just to keep it from moving, um, bouncing or anything else. And then I brought it all the way around back here, again on the outside of the ridges, and just brought it up into the amp Speaker wires, same thing. Had to run back here, uh, zip tied them down around in here on the carpet, and had the sub wire feed into those wires up in the front, and they just ran up through this hole into the inputs and the crossover. Um, other than that, oh yeah, so these guys, these little washers, um, I had the problem with these ribs, since it it keeps the floor from being completely flat so it's hard to mount some things. I was considering using Velcro or like a 3M double sided foam tape, but I decided to go on these rubber washers. I don't know if you can tell, but these rubber washers are probably about, I forget the thickness, eighth of an inch maybe. They just lift it up just enough to be flat on these ribs or just slightly above the ribs. and. I had to find points where they're in between the ribs so I can mount it flat. So you just kind of have to play with the location of your amp and find where the best spot is. You should be able to find one uh, pretty easily, but it can be kind of hard. 
and um, these rubber washers are tapered so it allows for a little bit more height and it helps to reduce like vibrations and other things inside the amp um, on the crossovers I did the exact same thing the crossovers has four have four different uh, points where you can mount some bolts so instead of getting the tapered version of this washer I stacked two regular rubber washers underneath the mounting points and this again raised it up above the ribs and that made that pretty clean um, the bolts were one inch you could probably go less than that those are a little long to be honest um, anything else oh yeah so all my speaker wires were run all the way up through there besides one I ran the rear left speaker wire through here underneath this way and then up the pillar back here and then underneath the headliner all the way up to the front pillar and then down into the door boot um, the reason why I ran it up the headliner is so I'm not running it right next to the power wire that also runs down on the ground and I didn't want to run a wire from back here all the way around the front across the dash and then up the pillar because that's just I don't know this is kind of overkill too much wire um, it just made it easier to go this way the front left speakers in the car driver's seat I did run all the way through around the dash and then into the speakers so I would suggest getting a hundred feet of wire or uh, something similar just so you don't run out and you have to make more trips um, other than that I think we're good I think I got everything covered um, hope this helps um, again, go check out my Lost Jeeps article. It's pretty good. It's really comprehensive. Over 5,000 words. I just threw in everything I've learned through this install and uh, shared it with everyone there. So I hope, I hope it helps. And uh, good luck if you decide doing the same thing.